like happened on Black Tuesday since I was here last. And Bill Clinton takes away any reason that the communists have for keeping one American alive by giving them everything that they wanted. And you're going to see about the Congress and a man named Charles Schumer and others who will sit there and continuously and the media and refer to what happened at Waco as tear gas. I have said it time and time again, and I would that you would do something about it. We can demand that this issue be settled once and for all. Take Mr. Schumer, take Janet Reno, take Mr. Larry Potts, who ran it for the FBI. Take all those government apologists. I'll bet you you could fill a large room with them. And I know that Ted Turner has the money. And put them in a some kind of transparent box. And then don't pump thousands of gallons of CS gas. Just take one beer can size canister, pull the pin, and let it go in there and close the door. And then let the television cameras of the world observe how humane tear gas is. It is a lie. It is a lie. God hateth a liar. I believe that God hateth Washington, D.C. and almost all those people that inhabit those halls that we call Congress and the White House because they constantly lie. They let a man like Hubble up there. He looks like a big toad sitting on a lily pad. And they ask me, here a guy has admitted to two felonies. He's the number three man in the Justice Department of America, the number three person to give justice. And rather than let a grand jury indict him, he rushes forward and says, I'm guilty because he didn't want them to know. He didn't want the grand jury to look and see what he had done. And yet they invite him before Congress. They invite Larry Potts. They invite these people that have lied under oath with their hand to God. They said, I swear before God to tell the truth and nothing but the truth. So help me God. And then they stood right there and lied. Did they not? And then the Congress brings them on. What have we found out in these hearings? One, the BATF, did they or did they not lie? about the drug factory in the Branch Davidian just so they could have armed helicopters and tanks and military service. They admitted lying. Did Congress ever say, uh, well, wait a minute, hold it, you lied? Who lied? Who's responsible for lying? Who needs to be completely stripped of their office, disgraced in front of the American public and drummed out of service? Who lied? How many of you? No. Because, you see, they're liars themselves. And so they just say, oh, well, yes, you admit that you had, uh, had misspoken there. There's no problem. Did Larry Potts lie about writing a, a shoot-to-kill order on Vicki Weaver? He did lie. He swore to God and he lied. And did E. Michael Cahoe, who was one of his officials and then was head of the Jacksonville field office, did he lie? Yes. Finally, it comes out. Yes, E. Michael, since I was last here, Mr. K. Hole down in Jacksonville admits that he had taken the kill order from Larry Potts for Vicki Weaver. What have I been telling you? Friends, it will soon be three years. August of this coming month will be three years that Vicki Weaver was shot dead with nothing more deadly in her hands than a 10-month-old daughter. Not by accident, but shot on purpose. An order from Washington, D.C. by Mr. Larry Potts, who was then promoted to the chief deputy director of the FBI. What is the FBI's motto? Integrity, honor, and bravery. Really? Really. It should be, shouldn't it? I knew what was going to happen at Waco. The Dallas Morning News and the Waco newspaper called me on the phone and said, All right, Colonel Greitz, you're a counter-terrorist expert. What happens now? This was after David Koresh had made his radio talk. Remember over Craig Smith? He bought him the time so that he could make this talk. He said he would surrender. He didn't. And I said, 
It's simple. Here is exactly what will happen next. They will use armored vehicles. They will make an announcement. Friends, it's over. We don't want to hurt anybody, but as of today, we're all going home one way or the other. We are going to punch a hole in the building. If you do not shoot at us, we are not going to harm you. We want you to surrender. You are going to surrender today. It's over. We're going to punch a hole, and there will be one of our clearance teams. If you do not seek to harm us, you need to raise your hands and come out, and we will process you. Now, this takes a little bit of bravery on the side of the FBI, but isn't this what the hostage response team is trained to do? When I was up at Weaver's with them, these weren't Ephraim Zimbalist juniors. These weren't people of great intellect. These were kids that did push-ups and set-ups and pull-ups almost all day and all night when they weren't dressed like trees out there around Weaver's house. These were commandos. These were rangers. These are the people that I've trained all my life. I can relate to these kids. You know what my boys had that these boys didn't? We had an enemy. We had communist forces with fixed bayonets. We had communist forces with tens of thousands in their uniform. We had them with machine guns. We had them with cannon. And they only had weavers. But like my people, these guys are trained like heavyweight fighters. And never do they get a chance to get into the ring. Their ring was weavers. Their ring was Waco. They want to hurt somebody. That's what they're there for. They've got these machine guns. They wear these helmets. They've got all this armor protection. It's hot. It's uncomfortable. They've got an enemy. They are going to have a confrontation. They're not going to be denied it. Friends, they would have burned weavers out just like they burned Waco out. God did not intend for those weavers to die. I think God did an excellent job. First of all, look. I was contacted way down in Phoenix, Arizona. I never knew about Weaver. Secondly, it was a miracle that we were able to break the police line. I felt like Moses walking across the Red Sea. You try to get through FBI, BATF, U.S. Marshals. I had to arrest the governor of Idaho and Mr. Sessions, head of the FBI, and the Marshal Service. I arrested the chief agent. You try that. That's non-habit forming. I'd never done that before. I didn't know if it'd work. But friends, when you've got to do something, see, that's it. Do something, even if it's wrong. You pray. I have never once led my men into impossible situations, and that was an impossible situation, unless I have gotten on my knees and said, Father, and I don't say, give me the plan, because, see, that's what he gave me this thing right up here for. But I say to him, Father, this is my plan. If this plan is righteous, if this plan is within thy will, please, then give us the miracle to execute it. And friends, I'll tell you, if you've never tried that, you do it. Because you'll be amazed how all of a sudden the communication is opened up between you and angels and chariots of fire. And I think that our Father in Heaven knew. I had never thought about arresting anybody in my life. I'm a soldier. I'm not a policeman. But that thought came to me at Weaver's. We put that thing together in one day. We arrested them, and there went the Red Sea. And the rest of it is pretty much history. But I know what those boys think up there. These are kids. They are tough. They are hard. They are commandos. They're going to hurt you. And when they got up here at Waco, and it took 51 days, Friends, they weren't going to be denied. Now, we come down to integrity. We know there's no more integrity, at least not in the higher ranks. I don't know if there ever was. I believe that people in the lower ranks are trying to do the very best they can. But friends, I remember a time when General William C. Westmoreland looked at me in the limousine and said, Bo, you don't think my generals lied to me, do you, in Vietnam? How do you answer somebody like that? This guy's a four-star general. He is the chief of staff of the United States Army. I said, General, yes, they lied to you. And he would not believe me. 
He said, Bo, I cannot accept that. If I accept the fact that my generals lied to me, then it meant I lied.